Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tyla Gomez and today I just want to talk about some things that I learned while dating in LA. I've learned a lot of things over my one and a half years. <laughs> and for reference, I've lived in North Carolina, I've lived in London, I've lived in New York, I've, li I've, I've lived around. And LA is definitely a very, very unique place when it comes to dating. So without further ado, I just want to get into the 10 things I learned while dating in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> now, just a disclaimer, don't come for me. If you get offended by this, it's like, it's because the shoe fit. I also consulted some friends who've lived here longer, so it's not just me. The first thing I learned while dating in Los Angeles is that it's a rental. And what I mean by that is pretty much looks are deceiving. You know, you see a guy driving down Melrose with a Rolls Royce, I'm gonna tell you a secret, girl. He does not own that Rolls, that Rolls Royce. He is renting it. Because you know what? People with those kind of cars, they don't just drive them around the hot spots. Like, that's a tourist destination. They're not going to just take it for a stroll. But you know who will? Flexors. In LA, homelessness takes many different forms. And it looks a lot of different ways. You know, it can be the person on the street in tattered clothes, but it can also be the rapper in the club balling. You see a guy in the club with a bunch of chains on, you think he's balling? Nah, he's actually homeless. I remember this guy who seemed to be breaded up trying to crash with me and it was giving homeless because we hadn't even gone on a date or even really met really. But he was trying to come over and spend the night because he didn't want to share a room with his cousin. It just was giving, you do not have proper residency and you are looking to bump some off of me. Which, some girls might go for that. Me, however, I, I like my, my dudes with their own shelter. Maybe I'm asking for too much. <laughs> now, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair to both sides. I'm sure the same thing can be said about the ladies, you know. I'm sure everyone knows the ladies with the Chanel bags, the Gucci shoes, but yet they're asking you to borrow $40. Those girls exist too, you know? It's it's a hard city out here. It's expensive. <laughs> I'm not her though. I'm not that girl. So be safe. <laughs> Y'all be safe. Okay, the second thing I learned in LA is that the streets are hot. And by that, I mean, you need to wrap it up. <laughs> I've had so many friends tell me about like, you know, scares with this and catching this from this person. And you know what? I'm not here to stigmatize anything. I want to end the stigma against STDs. I should be treated, you know, somewhat seriously though. Like you need to get tested. You need to make sure you're in good health. So you're not spreading that shit to other people. So wrap it up because the streets are hot. And another thing, a lot of guys, a lot of guys will try to hit it raw. They will, and it's really gross. You are not special. You are not special. If they are trying to fuck you raw, that is just something they do. You know, it's not like, oh, they feel like they can trust you. No. They just are very irresponsible with their health. So please, ladies, be safe out here. Keep some condoms on you. But honestly, after, if a guy tries to like fuck me raw the first time we're fucking, I don't even want to sleep with him after that because it's like, you're kind of, you don't know me from a can of paint. You don't, like, the streets are hot. That's all I'm going to leave it at. I now, the third thing I learned while dating in L.A., she's not crazy. She's not crazy. Whoever she is, she's not crazy. He's telling you she's crazy, but that's to keep the heat off of him. No girl, okay, there are crazy girls. There are, you know, multiple situations that can be happening. But nine times out of ten, a girl is going off of what a guy tells her. And if a guy, guys typically like to, you know, play the field, play two, two girls at a time, and they like doing, well, in L.A., it's more like three, four, five, but we won't get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that later, actually. But, like, if a girl is all over a guy, not leaving him alone, blowing up his phone, he's, nine times out of ten, he's doing something to make her feel like she can do that. Make her feel like she's justified. Make her feel like she has a connection to him. 
So I would just say don't trust a guy who's talking about his crazy ex because you really got to hear her side of it because y'all know these guys be gaslighting out here. The fourth one, I personally haven't had to deal with that because I choose to date a man of a certain caliber, but this thing is he's not going to pay you back. And I've heard this from multiple girls. Like there are just these men who owe them money, hundreds upon thousands of dollars. These guys out here, they be scamming. And they not only scam the banks, they scamming girls like you and me too. I have a zero lending policy <laughs> when it comes to these niggas. Now I, I'd give a friend. I ain't gonna lie. If I if my friend needed something, I'd give a friend. But these niggas, nah. Nada, nada, nada. That's not in my ministry. I don't believe giving money to guys and you shouldn't either because in LA they will not pay your ass back so now number five I'm gonna just rip the band-aid off I don't know who needs to hear this and I probably will need to hear this I'm gonna play this back once I start getting my feelings about another guy but here's the thing you are not the only one I know I know I know but he told you you are he told you you are not the only one. In a city like Los Angeles, you have to realize there are thousands, millions of beautiful women. Thousands, millions of rich, successful men. The competition is fierce. The competition is fierce. And before you meet somebody, they have this whole life before you, you know? So it's kind of silly and a bit delusional to think that they just weren't talking to anybody and there's nobody in their past. You know, you got to just stay sharp. Like in a city like L.A. with all this competition, all this, all these choices, like people are entertaining people. And it's better to just go into a situation knowing that you're not the only one than thinking you're the only one and then getting your feelings hurt when you find out, oh, I'm not. And honestly, before you put a title on something, you can't really be mad. Like people... Are being approached every day it's hard to be the only one for anybody it's hard to be the only friend it's okay you're still special just not to him <laughs> now, number six this is personal to me but it's a larger larger lesson number six is dinner date or nothing I said what I said dinner date or nothing and what I mean by that is it's important when you're dating in LA to set your own boundaries and stick to them for me, my boundary is if you want to get to know me, you want to pursue a potential relationship with me, you need to ask me on a proper dinner date. It can be lunch. I'll be, it'll, it can be lunch, but you need to ask me on a proper date. And that's just something I really believe in. That's something I am very firm on. Times when I have, you know, not followed and not upheld that boundary for myself and I tried to be the cool girl the chill girl and tried to play that role things just did not work out for me I regretted it me my boundary is dinner date or nothing for you it might be FaceTime or nothing it might be something else so don't feel like that you have to do that too I just I think it's a good way to see who's serious and who's not and who's like cheap and who's not because a lot of guys you know y'all know the the rhetoric it's like these girls are using us for meals okay and like is that like so scary to you that like someone's gonna con you out of a $20 meal like that is so scary to you like maybe you shouldn't be dating like if $20 a $20 meal okay I'm being facetious a good dinner in LA is like 50 but if a $50 meal is really like you don't want to get conned out of $50 like that's really like your breaking point that's your biggest fear then I don't think you're the one for me personally personally you know I'm seeing this guy now and we were talking about that and he was like yeah I've heard like guys like say that but I'm like you know I like going out too if things don't work out between us it's not like you used me we just went out and we didn't get along but it's like I like going out too. And it's kind of like the same thing for me. I will go out to dinner with friends and like have a great time and drop some money. Like that's just something I enjoy doing. So if my partner can't meet me there, you're not the one for me. 
And I implore every woman and guy to think about what that thing is for you. Set that boundary and stick to it because I tell you guys will really try to do the least and get the most out of you. So be smart and don't let that happen. And know like what you want before you just accept something from a guy. So it's like know what you want going into this situation. So like they can't just offer you something and you're like, oh, well, this is what's on the table. I'll take it. No, come to the table and know what you want. So you're not just accepting whatever. Number seven, there are some men that will try to buy your love. City girls, whatever. Y'all can complain about the city girls, but y'all men, y'all be listening and taking notes. <laughs> y'all be listening and taking notes. Men will really try to buy your love. And like, that's okay. That is okay. You know what? <laughs> it ain't tricking if you got it. I think grown-ups can do whatever they want. But for me, I think it is a certain kind of insecure man that will think he has nothing else to offer but his wallet and he'll like lead with crazy money like look I like being taken care of but there's a difference between a guy who's so desperate and insecure about what he has to offer in a relationship that he just throws money at you versus a guy who is successful, has a lot of money, and takes joy in spoiling and being generous to the people in his life. You know, there's one that's coming from a, a place of desperation and one that's coming from a place of abundance. And I like this person and I want to see their lives easier. Gotta learn the difference between the two. Like, it's hard, but like, as you start dealing with more and more men, you'll realize it. I'll never forget, oh my god, I was outside of this club, Beauty in Essex, and this guy came up to me and he was like, let me take you shopping. I like had expressed I wasn't interested. He was like, hey, how you doing? Let me talk to you. I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> and he's like, let me take you shopping. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. And he's like, no, have you ever had forever flowers? I'll buy you forever flowers. I'm like, I already have some feet right there. <laughs> already have some things so though. He's like, well, let me pay your rent. I, I was like, what's your cash app? Let me cash up. Like, let me cash up request you then. I'm going to pull your card. If you're coming at me like that, I'm going to pull your card. Like, who would? I'm going to pull that card. And he won't even try to, he won't even try to play a game. But, like, that is so desperate. Like, I'm not, if you come off the bat asking me something like that, I'm not taking you seriously. I don't even look at you as someone who respects himself, you know? But then there's a difference between like, and I'm talking to this guy and he's like, oh baby, like, I really like you. <laughs> Let me take that run off your hands. Like, it's different, you know. But if you are looking for a man to buy your love, this is the perfect city to do it because they will. <laughs> Number eight. LA is small, but it's as small as you make it. So what I mean by that is if you choose to only date a certain race and a certain industry, like you choose to only date black men in the entertainment industry. That's a really small circle, you know? And within that circle, you're bound to meet people who work together, go out together. Because, you know, everyone works and goes out. Like, the work is done in the strip club, pretty much. So everyone's friends here. Everyone's connected. A good way. Instagram made it so easy to check. When you follow someone on Instagram, you can like go to their followers and see like the mutuals. So you know roughly if they know the same people as you and that can that can just be helpful to know. But yeah, if you don't want to end up dating a lot of people in the same circle, I would just be cognizant about having a wider range. Like for me, I'll date people in the entertainment industry, but I also try not to shit where I eat. And as an actress, I don't really want to do that. I don't. And I think artists are, let me stop, because if a certain rapper hits me up, like, you know, it's different. But I try not to date in the entertainment industry, but I will date, like, you know, doctors, lawyers, whatever. Like, just widen. I try to make LA as big as possible because I personally don't want someone I'm dating to know another person that I'm dating that I would not like that personally personally but that leads me to number nine everybody shares here 
Sharing is caring in LA. And by that, I mean friends swap and share and they don't care. Which, you know, I'm open-minded, I'm progressive, but I don't, mm, like, I mean, mm, yeah, not for me. Not for me. Unless it's like Drake, like, you know, me and all my friends can share Drake. It's Drake. Let's share him. Whatever. But if it's just your run-of-the-mill guy that you're seeing, no, I don't want to be sharing him with other people. But people do it here. Like, especially if it's not a serious thing. Like, if people are just having fun, they will really switch and swap. So, I actually have a funny story about the whole friend sharing friends thing. Um, so, this guy invited me to his birthday dinner. And, like, we ended up going to the club after. This was a guy I had hooked up with. <clears throat> this was a guy I had hooked up with before. So, I thought he was inviting me as his date. Like, we had that before, like, I'm gonna hook up tonight, like, I'm your date. No, 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 no. So we go to the dinner, it's great, it's chill. Then we go to the club, and I see him dancing with another girl, like, he's grinding, bumping, grinding, dance with another girl. At that point, I'm like, okay, like, I mean, I don't care, but now I'm, like, not interested in going home with you after this. I can't in good conscience go home with you after I see you bumping and grinding with someone else in my face. Like, that just doesn't sit well with me. And then, while I'm watching him grind on this other girl, his friend is like, oh, you see so-and-so down there? And I'm like, yeah, he's dancing with so-and-so. And then his friend's like, yeah, so that's why it's okay if you dance with me. And I'm like, these people are different. And then another one of his friends asked me out for the, like, to dinner for the next night. And I'm just like, whoa. I thought this was like rule number one, you don't do. You know? But it's also like I don't want to be labeled as a certain thing. It's so it's so messed up, like this patriarchal system, because they're the ones coming on to me. But I end up having a conversation with this dude like, hey, I don't know what kind of thing you have going on in this friend group, but I saw you dancing with that girl and your friend was trying to dance with me and another one of your friends asked me out tomorrow. I don't know. What what what's going on? And he was like, it's basically like, yo, just have fun. Like, go out with him, have a good time. Like, we're all just having fun. So I'm like, okay. So I went out with him. But it's just like, y'all are different, okay? Y'all are different. But I also did a whole story time on something similar, but just kind of messed up that happened to me involving friends sharing. I'm going to put it here. So just check it out if you want to hear more about L.A. culture. And then number 10. The 10th and most important thing that I've learned while dating in L.A. is to just have fun. I... For the most part, accept it that my husband is not in this sinful, lawless city called LA. My husband's not here, you know? But who is here? The ballers. <laughs> so many great experiences to be had in this city. So my mindset is just, you know, have fun. Don't put too much pressure on situations, you know? In LA, everyone is just different. So it's harder to commit and find someone to commit to. And if you find that, great. But I just, I don't think it's worth stressing over, you know? I think when the time comes, then it's good to change focus. But as of right now, I say just have fun and have quality experiences. Like my thing is I just want to have as many cool experiences, try as many cool things, and do it in the company of good people. That's important to me. So while dating in LA, I'm just looking for good company and good times. And I implore you to do the same. So that was 10 things that I learned while dating in Los Angeles. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, comment and like, not comment and like, comment and like this video. And let me know what things stuck out to you the most. I mean, Depending on where you are, are there similar things? I, I'm curious to know. You know, I enjoy dating. I am a serial dater. 
Is that bad to say? Is that a cute word for hoe? No. 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 I just, I enjoy dating. You know, some people like going to the club. I like going on a dinner date. We all have our things. But this is just stuff I've learned over the course of my year and a half. Just dating in LA. And I just think dating and relationships are very interesting. So let's keep this conversation going. If there's another video on this topic that you'd like me to touch on, comment it below. I'm very receptive to making videos based on what the people want to see. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.